Shalom Yashwala. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh to the 144,000 elect and to the one third of all men, women, and children of the nation of Yashala that is coming back to these law, statutes, and commandments in these last days. So today we're going to be talking about New Year's because New Year's is just another pagan holiday that nobody really should be celebrating. It has nothing to do with the Most High. And you're going to find out really soon that nothing really changes because it's a new year. So um, let's let's start with January. All right. It's because New Year starts on January 1st. OK. At 12 o'clock midnight. And as you can see here, January. Right. Um, is the first month of the year in the Julian and Gregorian calendar. OK, because January didn't always exist. OK, now the word January is derived after Janus, the god of beginnings and transitions in Roman mythology. So that's already telling you that we're dealing with folly already from the jump. Because the Romans, just like in my last video, they were following Zeus. OK, they were following um, their pagan gods, right? And Janus was another one of those gods. Let's just start with how things used to be. So, that, so the Hebrew calendar is a twelve month, a twelve month calendar. Okay, starting in March, and it goes through uh, the the twelfth. Then it goes through twelve months. All right, but through history, these Edomites sought to change laws and the times and that was prophesied by daniel let's go to daniel ch uh, chapter 7 and verse 25 this is the book of daniel chapter 7 and verse 25 and he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high okay that's talking about the captivity that we were in and forcing us in captivity and you know uh being being oppressed and Think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until time and time, times and dividing of time. So we were going to be in this, this situation for a while. But during this time, when the Romans took over Jerusalem, they were operating under their own calendar. Okay, now this was the old Roman calendar, which consisted of only 10 months. If you look at the prefix of the end of our Gregorian calendar months, like starting with October, October, oct is a uh, a prefix for eight okay november nov nov that is a prefix that that means nine and december is a prefix uh, meaning uh 10. for a time the roman calendar was a spin-off of the hebrew calendar why because the first month actually started in March, which is correct because spring, according to the Hebrew calendar, is the beginning of months. How do we know that? Okay, if we go to Exodus chapter 12, you'll see that it says in verse 1, And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. This is when we were delivered um, from Egypt. This is talking about Passover, which occurs in the first month. If you go to Exodus 23 and 15, it says, Thou shalt keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded thee in the time appointed in the month of Abib. For in it thou camest out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. Okay, now if you look up the word Abib, Abib is the original name of the first month of the Jewish sacred calendar. It's, a, it's around mid-March, so they understood to a certain degree that the beginning of months began in March or mid-April. Now, the issue here is the Edomites, they wanted to control God's calendar by creating a fixed calendar. So even though they understood the beginning of the year was in March, they still wanted to have a fixed calendar. So they created, you know, 10 months out of the year starting from March and then where and then later on reformed that calendar to include January and February. January, okay, was attributed to the god Janus. And now here's what's important because when you are ruling and you are honoring a false god, you have the power to give energy 
and to give strength to that false god okay so let's go into janice and, and see what some of his some of the attributes were on janice okay we're gonna go to uh, the britannica all right so you see here janice in roman religion the animistic spirit of doorways and archways okay we're gonna touch on that later so they're saying they're saying this goes back to the founders of rome romulus we already talked about the archways now look here it says traditionally the doors of this shrine were left open in a time of war and were kept closed when rome was at peace according to the roman historian livy the gates were closed only twice in all the long period between numa populus and augustus now numa populus and augustus they were the ones that include that included uh january into the old roman calendar right so Jan january became the 11th month and february became the 12th month but then they reorganized everything so that january instead of being um the 11th month would now be the new year so they reorganized the entire calendar so that january would be based on the new year and because of how they were honoring the greek or, or the roman god janus who is the god of all beginnings they associated him with doorways when rome was in a time of war these doors these for lack of better words these spiritual doors let's go get a picture so if you look here you are seeing the archways and the doorways of janus okay so it's it's believed that when you go walk through these doors you are going to be in a new place in a, a new beginning right out with the old and in with the new that's why um when you look at the the idol of janus you will see two heads one looking in the past and one looking into the future it also represents duality it also represents a transition okay so the way that they were uh worshiping this god for example in times of war if they were in a war they left those doors open why because they believed that there would come a time where they would transition from that reality to a to a reality that was in peace so when they were in peace they would close those spiritual doors now whether uh, it, there was an actual door or not it doesn't really matter it, it's a symbol for a transition from one period of time to another so that's what that was the type of energy they were giving to this roman god janus so that that's what makes it pagan it doesn't really mean anything but it did mean something to the romans now that has later translated into new year's day because what do you see people doing today you see people trying to escape 2020 and get into 2021 people always make new year's res resolutions at the end of the year right they're not they don't have any re resolutions for the most high they're not talking about coming back to the law statutes and commandments and how they can serve the most high better it's really self uh selfish thoughts like you know well i'm, I'm gonna try to make more money or I'm, I'm gonna try to you know have this type of prosperity going into 2021 okay it, it's always something that has to do with themselves rather than the most high and then you have businesses people might have jobs where you know you're in the fourth quarter and you have to make these sales right in order to come out with better numbers going into the new year so in a sense in our minds we have been conditioned to to believe that somehow we are going to jump from one dimension the dimension that we're currently in into another dimension that's going to be much better that is the spirit that that people take on for new years and it all derives from the spirit of this false god janus so that is the spirit behind new years so it's important to understand that the origin of these pagan holidays dictate the real intent so it does not it doesn't matter what you're thinking today okay because especially with, with the pandemic going on people like, like there were a lot of things that happened in 2020 and I heard, I heard so many people saying oh my gosh can can 2020 you know can we get can we get hurry up and and get past 2020 i'm already waiting for 2021 well, what, what, what do you think is going to happen in 2021 who told who told you that on january 1st that everything was going to be different 
or maybe things were going to be better simply because it's a new year. Well, it comes from the Romans. It comes from their pagan worship of the Roman god Janus. So important takeaways in regarding to celebrating New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, what have you, is number one, it takes away your attention and your energy and faith away from the Most High. That's always going to be the number one thing. Number two, it alters your perception of time and when the new year is really supposed to be, which number three, misaligns you with the stars and the planet and nature, which ultimately misaligns you with the Most High. So you're, you're, you become more susceptible to going off. Number four, it's false god worship. So you're following uh, the ways of Janus with the misconception that because you're entering a new year, that it's a new beginning, as if you're jumping from one dimension to another as you're crossing, or if, or as if you are crossing one path and entering a new path. Right, that whole mentality of thinking out with the old and in with the new. I'm leaving 2020 behind me. I'm going to 2021. I'm changing. I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna change that. You know, that whole uh, getting rid of the past and looking forward to the future spirit, which doesn't do anything for your spirit. And the number five, it generates energy in the form of money into the hands of your oppressors, as well as opening the doors to a multitude of sins that occur during this day whether it's fornication drunkenness covetousness adultery you name it and with that i want to give all praises to yahweh by shim yahweh shai if one person was edified the job has been done Shalom.